Okay, so now we're talking about the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. And I know one of the confusing things is sometimes there's this overlap with the other agencies, Army Corps of Engineers and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Um, but I know like, you know, California Department of Fish and Wildlife, and by the way, they used to be known as California Department of Fish and Game. So everyone used to refer to them as Fish and Game, so you may still hear that a bit. Um, you know, you go back to acronym CDFW is but it's used a lot, but you'll hear fish and game, which you, you does mean CDFW now. So maybe Scott, just talk a bit about how does their jurisdiction differ or possibly overlap with the Army Corps? So one of the main differences is, is CDFW's jurisdiction is, is more habitat based. Uh, so instead of taking like Army Corps, you have your ordinary high water mark, which is kind of hydrology based. Uh, this is basically the top of the bed and bank of a drainage feature uh, is kind of their limit of jurisdiction. But they also go further into detail and, and assert jurisdiction over any adjacent riparian habitat or wetlands. So the main difference between the Army Corps limits is that's mainly just a stream course or the CDFW jurisdiction extends beyond that and includes all the riparian habitat adjacent to that. So I know we talked about um, connected active drainages to waters of the U.S. Um, are we talking more about um, disconnected or historic drainages now? That well, the way that fish the level? fishing game code reads is any conveyance of flows. It doesn't say isolated flows, connected flows. It just says if it conveys flows. So unlike the Army Corps, who no longer take jurisdiction over isolated waters, California Department of Fish and Wildlife Service will take jurisdiction over isolated waters. So as we talked about drainages in the past that eventually get to waters of the U.S., if there's a drainage that's going to, say, a lake, and that's where it stops, is that not Army Corps and is it um, fish and game? If the lake does not flow anywhere to a connected downstream navigable water, or that lake is not considered a navigable water, then the Army Corps does not have jurisdiction over it. Okay, okay. Um, so when we're talking about the habitat and the species, which you know we'll talk a little bit more about, but it appears that a lot of the species that are in the U.S. and Fish and Wildlife Service, a lot of them are on the same as California Department of Fish and Wildlife. So how does that work when, you know, take, I don't know, Lee Bell's Vario, that's on both, right? Or yep. um, the Kino Butterfly, that's on both, right? Um, do both take jurisdiction? Do they both have mitigation measures? Sometimes. So one of the complicated things with the species, it all depends on timing and litigation. So a lot of the federal species that aren't listed under the state are usually required or as a result of some litigation that was required uh, to emergency list a species because of some specific project. Uh, so it went through the federal process quickly and was approved uh, but didn't get through the state process. And vice versa, a lot of the same things if you have a state listed species like the Mojave ground squirrel uh, but didn't go through the federal process. Um, but for the majority of the species in California, they're both listed as state and federal because they went through the process at the same time. So if you have habitat for one of these that are listed on both, um, do you have permits required by both? Or, well again, you don't get a permit from U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, right? But it's, does it feed into the Army Corps permit as far as mitigation measures? Or does, you know, CDFW basically dictate the mitigation measures or what you're going to do with that impact? A lot of that depends on the Fish and Wildlife Service, the state Fish and Wildlife Service. So okay. under the Section 7 consultation, uh, the Federal Fish and Wildlife Service is required to consult with the Army Corps of Engineers and they come up with whatever their mitigation is. If the state Fish and Wildlife Service feels that that mitigation is appropriate, a lot of times they'll just defer to the federal jurisdiction and they'll be done. Um, if they don't feel that the mitigation is appropriate for the impacts of the project, they may come back and require a subsequent state level incidental take permit, which is under section 2081 of the Fish and Game Code. Okay, so it um, gets a little confusing, but <laughs> I mean, that's when you start looking at these species, you go around both, but um, um, 
Okay, so I think that's hopefully just a little bit about uh, uh, the jurisdiction, and I, I don't think it's totally clear, but you know, again, ask, ask someone like Scott.